Greg and Josh are not paid critics. They are not experts, nor do they claim to be. They are just two nerds that love to talk about internet shows. However, they're still going to tell you about what they think. So sit down, relax, and enjoy the latest episode of All Queued Up. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of All Queued Up. Uh, I am your host, Greg Dietz, and with me always is my co-host, Josh Fisher. Hey, everybody. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, John Abaya from the Freakin' Awesome Podcast. How are you, John? I'm good. How are you guys? Um, I'm fine. It's it's Josh that's, uh, that I'm worried about. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've contracted some type of HIV. I think it's HIV. <laughs> uh, my daughter brought it home from school, so I've contracted HIV. From a, a ten-year-old, <laughs> some child gave it to her. I'm really not happy with the abstinence practices here in this state. They need better education. Um, At least but, it's yeah. not sweltering like California is right now. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> fucking hiv, man. I don't know. I think I think it's just a head cold. Either way, if I sound stuffy on this broadcast, that's why. Other than that, I'm good. Enjoyed a birthday last week. Wife enjoyed a birthday yesterday, and uh, somebody else had a birthday this weekend, didn't they? Oh yeah, me, I did. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. yeah uh, so. Funny enough, uh, not intentionally, but yeah, Josh and I, Josh, Josh's birthday and mine are incredibly close to one another. So, I guess, I guess, if we're My- still doing this in a year, we'll have to do like a birthday show <laughs> or some. Shit. Mine was in the beginning of the month. <laughs> So we're all April babies, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're more oh, yeah. Aquarius than Taurus. I'm a Taurus. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Aries more. <laughs> Aries, or is it? Aries? It's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, April first. Okay. Yep. Anyway, we need to shout move out on. to Guys. all of our parents having sex when they did. Woo! <laughs> having sex late summer. Um. All right, guys, if you're new to the show, welcome, because that was a hell of an intro. And um, if you're still here, thanks. <laughs> Uh, uh, what we do on this show is we watch two internet shows or internet ba- streaming based shows, a la Netflix, Hulu Plus, Amazon Prime, YouTube Red, um, and then we we watch the shows in their entirety. So if it's ten episodes, thirteen episodes, twenty four episodes, we watch them all, and then we review and discuss or discuss then review them. Um, uh, also, fair warning: some of the shows that we talk about have heavy themes. So if that's something that you don't want to hear, feel free to skip through. Um, also spoilers we heavily talk spoilers so if it's something that you want to see on your own and not have spoiled skip to the point where we re- we give our score i guess maybe um and then come or back just and then watch come back. it and come back and see if your thoughts match up with what we think that, that works too um and where you can do that you know see what we've watched and whatnot and and past episodes is all queued up podcast.com um, that's where you'll find all of our social medias too, which we'll plug at the end of the show. Guys, today's episode, we are going to be discussing the show on Netflix, uh, Lost in Space, which is the remake of the 50s show? Uh, 60s. It was originally 60s. done in 1965 through 68. Okay. Uh, I couldn't remember. I was like, I don't know. Uh, and, um, Seth Rogen's special, Hilarity for Charity. Uh, we'll be discussing the Seth Rogen show first, so, uh... Here we go. Um, uh, Josh, give a quick summary about what Hilarity for Charity is. Uh, well, basically, uh, it is Seth Rogen himself hosting an evening of comedy to raise awareness for Alzheimer's disease, which his mother-in-law, uh, along with millions of Americans and people worldwide, <laughs> suffer from. And they just want to raise awareness because there is no cure for Alzheimer's, and it is a very debilitating disease. And it's a wonderful cause. You know, they're doing this. He's actually spoken and given testimony before Congress, uh, you know, to take action uh, and raise awareness and funds for things like that. And some of the things they do as a result of this charity is award people with a year's worth of weekly in-home care for people that suffer from Alzheimer's. So it's a wonderful cause. 
I 100% agree. I was going to ask you guys, um, before we get into the comedy bit, I want to kind of briefly talk about the, the charity itself um, and, and ask you guys, do, you, do either of you have experience with anybody who's had Alzheimer's? Yes, I do. Okay. Myself personally, no. Okay. Um, my grandmother did. Um, and I, I, I remember this one instance it sticks out in my head like a sore thumb, but, um, we went over to her house to do yard work and we, we got to the door and she was really happy to see us, hugged us all and said, have you guys had lunch? And we said, uh, yeah, we did. We had lunch on our way up. She's like, okay, cool. We go out, we start working 20 minutes later. Have you guys had lunch yet? 20 minutes later. Have you guys had lunch yet? The worse it got, uh, the worse, like, she forgot that her husband, my grandfather, had passed away. Mm -hmm. She thought he was missing. Called the police. Um, We had a moment where she didn't know what year it was. Uh, It was very, very rough on my father. Um, I was a little bit too young to quite comprehend what was going on, but I knew something was wrong. Deeply wrong. Um, So, yeah, I have, like, firsthand experience with it. Uh, John, what is your experience with it? So both of my aunts had it, and I was probably already uh, out of high school by the time we found out uh, they both had it. So one had it before the other one, and then uh, I remember uh, during the funeral for one of them, before one of my aunts, the other one didn't rem- doesn't even know why they were at the funeral, and that was really sad, mm-hmm. and we were like telling her, about the situation, what happened, and she just broke out crying, and then, and and then after fo- maybe maybe about ten minutes, and then she asked that same question again, and then my mom had to like take her away, and then like comfort her basically uh, away uh, from the funeral home. But yeah, it was like really it hits you hard when you actually see it. And I was like, oh mm-hmm. wow, especially uh, when yeah, it's a relative. It like it, it's yep, it's super rough. Um, Josh, mm-hmm. you said you didn't have firsthand experience, but you know. I've I've Is never had or? no I've actually uh, not had to endure witnessing anybody personally that I know or related to okay. or even know of anyone. Uh, so okay. Um, I thought maybe you like heard a story or a friend had it. Um, no, friends, no. Them. Um. Well, so that's that's what made this special so important to me because as I was laughing hysterically at a lot of these comedians and and bits and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, um, I, I also like, you know, I was like, Oh man, I'm wiping away tears of laughter. And then immediately it was like, they talk about the charity. They talk about what they're doing and, and the fight that they're having and, and where this money's gone and showing kind of the, the point. And, one of the biggest aspects to this charity is that when you when you know somebody who has Alzheimer's, nine times out of ten, they don't have the funding or the money or the insurance to um, be properly taken care of. Yep. Um, a lot of the times, um, Alzheimer's patients will, um, or sufferers, victims, whatever you want to call them, they will do things... That they th- that they think that's a normal thing. That they will go about their day and then do something, and it really fucks something else up. Um, and so they kind of need to be watched borderline 24-7. And that that was the stress that with my, my dad and, his, and my aunt was going through when my grandma had it. Um, the other thing that they didn't really talk about in the special, but Alzheimer's can cause other brain problems. Like my grandmother ended up having an aneurysm and, oh, wow. and yeah, and, and she died from that aneurysm. Um, so like, but people don't, people don't know that. And so something like mm-hmm. this comes out and I'm just like, this is great. Like, this is perfect. It, 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 it gets people to really enjoy something funny, but then it's like, Hey, there's a serious problem and we need to draw attention to it. So, um, I'm really happy that that was uh, a, uh, basically the case here. Mm. Uh, that being said, do you guys want to move on to the funny stuff? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that is one of the benefits of comedy. Uh, that, that's 
you know, look at how long comedy has been used to raise awareness about causes. You know, I mean, yeah, that's uh, what was the one with that? Um, uh, uh, Robin Williams. I know which Goldberg. one you're talking about. Uh, Is it comic relief? The one that's the. I believe I, I believe so. so. I'm not 100 percent sure, so don't quote me accurately on that. But I mean, even you know, Bob Hope used to do things, you know. Yeah, the Bob Hope. Yeah. Yep. You know, just Jerry Lewis. Mm -hmm, Jerry Lewis. Yeah. So. The idea is not new, you know, but uh, I think the take on it, the way it was presented, is completely new. Yeah, mm. uh, I was going to say, like, the thing about this comedy special was it had, A, a variety of comedians. Like, I think every comedian that went up there had a different style. Yes. Uh, yeah. but, but the other aspect was, like, I remember watching these other like tele telethons and specials and stuff back in the day where comedians would get together and do a thing and make a show. And, um, it was, uh, it was very much family friendly. I was, I was getting ready to uh, say family friendly. <clears throat> this isn't this, this is far from family friendly. No. Uh, yeah. Arguably funnier for it. But then again, that's my sense of humor. Um, uh, I don't know where to begin because I think, I guess we can just basically like, this comedian really made me laugh if you guys want to go that route. I'll tell, you, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you who made me laugh the hardest by far. And that was Sarah Silverman's bit. Oh, yeah. I enjoy Sarah Silverman a lot. She is very talented. Um. I really liked what she was saying in this in this bit. It was it was funny. It was probably the funniest thing out of the thing to me. I'm gonna be honest, I thought the overall show itself was pretty weak. Uh really? Yeah, I only had a few brief chuckles here and there. I really didn't laugh hard at a lot of things in it. And I love a lot of these people that are in it. I love Nick Kroll. I love Seth Rogan. Mm hmm You know, uh I thought the opening bit was really, really bad. But it was. <laughs> it was. That, that <laughs> opening bit was pretty terrible, actually. I was like, man, I've got to sit through another 55 minutes of this. And then it got better. I'm glad it got better. But that opening well, bit was I, terrible. I think the, like, for me, for me, the comedians were the strong part. Like, by far. I, I thought, um, I really didn't dislike a single comedian. Like a yeah, John Mulaney. I'm thought. not a fan of John Mulaney at all. I'm a fan of John Lee. I mean, so I, I thought his was funny. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's not his delivery. His delivery is fine. And, you know, when he works with others, he's funny. But on his own, by mm -hmm. himself, I just don't find John Mulaney to be funny. That's, I think that's fair. I mean, that's, it's definitely yeah. a, that's a, what do you call that? Uh, that is an object or a subjective taste. Yeah, because mm. it's comedy. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to sit there and be like, well, oh, if you don't find this funny, you don't know shit. Exactly. Uh, his, his, just, his style of funny, you know, while I do find his, his uh, you know, like dry humor, I love dry humor. I just mm -hmm. am not a big fan of John Miller. I don't know. The hot point for me was the Muppets. I love the Muppets. Oh yeah, when they come out, that was they came so out really various cool. times, dude. <laughs> when when Kermit the Frog starts singing Rainbow Connection, that, oh, I cried for sure. I did um, too. That gets me every time, and it got me last <laughs> night when I watched this. It was also it was also really um, uh, poignant at like because it 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 happened right after. Him and his wife were out on stage talking about Alzheimer's. And, and talking about oh, how yeah. it affected her mother and their family directly. So it was really an emotional, impactful moment. So exactly. I think for that, that was the best time for them to do that part because of mm -hmm. the desired effect. I have this I have this feeling that that John, you liked it, but but Josh, I don't think you liked it. And that was the animation by, um, uh, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that came out Justin of nowhere Rowland. for me. That was the animation by Justin. That was just out of nowhere. I was like, huh? 
And Misty had it just... It was funny for me, but I was like, oh, is he doing this really? I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I was... <laughs> I, I, I woke Misty up. I was like, honey, you're all over and watch this. And she's like, huh? I said, just watch. And the next thing you know, bet you didn't know your big brother could do this, huh? Bet you didn't know your big brother could do this, right? Swinging it and then bending <laughs> over and doing that. And I was like, huh? And she just she just gives me this like and then that- eat shit look and rolled back over to go to sleep. It was funny. but God, that, 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 that had me rolling. Because like... I guess the reason it had me rolling was because I know that that's fucking like his style of of yep. absurdist comedy, but also going in a blue direction and knowing that he mm. can get away with that because him and Seth knowing they can get away with that because it's fucking Netflix. Oh my god, the whole thing I, like that 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 part had me because uh, so he started off with them just playing with themselves with their penises, and then all of a sudden when he started turning around, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like, what was he doing? <laughs> like, is he really doing this on a, a charity thing? Like, I didn't know they can do that until that part. So, oh, I was really surprised, and I was like laughing the whole time. When that I happened. yeah, I was I was like I was crying. I was laughing so hard. It was nice and short too. It didn't like it's, stay there too it, long. And then it's, when it's, it cuts away to the two characters, like, why is it there? Like. <laughs> The, it, it, the well, two well, that's animation what's funny character. is like is the joke itself of them not knowing that that was going to be edited yep. like that isn't necessarily where the comedy lies. The comedy lies in the idea of like the type of shit that um uh what's his name uh Andy Kaufman would Justin do. Rowland? Oh, okay, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the comedy is knowing that there's a bunch of people, probably uppity people, who aren't going to get a lot of the comedy, sitting in the audience just going, the fuck? <laughs> like, that's, that's <laughs> what the comedy for me is. So, I don't know. I mean, but I know that a lot of people would really dislike that. Mm-hmm. Um, did you at all find it funny, Josh? Or was it, was it like, nah, not for you? I mean, I didn't hate it. But it okay. didn't make me bust out of gut laughing. Uh, like I said, most of the show was just like mild chuckles here and there. I think the best performance uh, outside of Sarah Silverman and the Muppets was uh, Michael Che. I like yeah. his. Michael Che was really funny. Yeah. But I always enjoyed the weekly update, or what is it called? Night, I forgot what is it called in SNL. With him. Weekend so update. It's the same style. Yeah, weekend update. <laughs> Michelle Wolf had a really funny joke, but I don't remember. Like Her bit was okay. Like I, I laughed at it, but there was one joke she had that I was just like, that's a really solid fucking joke, but I don't remember what it was. The joke that I, that stands out in my mind the most is Sarah Silverman's of... <laughs> post coitus leaving. <laughs> If my grandma ever forgot <laughs> about Auschwitz, she could just look. She could just look at the tattoo on her arm, and then uh, <laughs> she's like, "Well, oh, I probably should talk about people forgetting things." <laughs> I lost my mind at that joke. It was so good. Oh shit! I was, man, laughing, I, about the, was, yeah, she was, I was laughing about the fact that you know she's like having to explain to somebody that you don't let your dog lick, lick up the post-coitus leavings. Uh, that, that was, was good. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I don't know if it's morally that's... wrong or if it's just gross. And I'm sitting there thinking, I think it's just more gross. <laughs> <laughs> My dog vomits up. <laughs> Boys, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. God fucking damn it! Like that's I, I adore blue comedy. Like it's my bread and fucking butter when it comes to stand up and. This fucking special like had it coming out the fucking ass. Well, at least most of it had it had it coming out the fucking. It literally <laughs> did at one point. So. Mhm. Absolutely. Um. Uh. What was I gonna say? Oh, so apparently there's a there's a couple animators on YouTube that were hired to to do the animation bit, and um the credits on all forms of the show. So like IMDb on the credits of the show itself like don't credit these animators and uh yeah and like um so one of the guys psychic pebbles who i've watched his animations on youtube for years um he kind of mentioned how excited he was he was like go check out this special it's really neat and uh and then people were just like why didn't you get credited and he's like oh because that was just the contract and then people were, like, getting tough. angry at Justin Roiland for it. Justin Roiland was like, 
Look, you guys can calm down because these guys got like these guys got to do something rad. They get to put it on their resume because it's totally in like the information about it. It's just not on mm-hmm. the credits itself, and they got paid quite a bit more than they would on any other project. So mm-hmm. fucking relax. <laughs> I wonder what that type of contract is. Like I, where you don't uh, show credit. Is that person named Zach Handel or no? No, I don't know. Okay. Because on the IMDb, there's only one artist credited for the... I don't know if it's for that uh, specific drawing. His name is Zach Handel. That's the only animator on there. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, it might be, but... Um, I don't know what Psychic Pebble's the, actual name is. So, there's that. Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm trying to think of some other stuff that happened. Like, we talked about uh, this, like the, the opening bit, but there's also... Uh, later, they did another live-action bit. With Sasha Baron Cohen. Sasha, yep, yeah. Yeah, uh, impersonating he, he, like, David right away Attenborough. Put makeup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you could tell, like, it's right away. Like, he rushed it with a makeup and uh, the wig and everything, and he just made up, like, a... He combined all his character names or something odd. Yeah, like, he was like, uh, I'm David Atten uh, Borat. Yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that bit was entertaining. I certainly wouldn't say mm-hmm. hilarious by any means. No, it no. was entertaining, but it wasn't. It wasn't knee slapping funny at all. No, I completely. The, agree. the I best think, uh, part of that was just like they wanted to get Benedict Cumberbatch, but he wanted fifty thousand dollars. I did it for twenty. Yeah, that, I think that was that was one. I, <laughs> I agree. That was a funny funny line, but the whole bit about. Um, what like Seth Rogen being a stono judicus? I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. This seems mashed together at the yeah. last minute. Yeah, oh, Seth Rogen but, gets um... high. We we kind of know, you know. <laughs> well, I think that's for me. That's what's really clever about the whole the whole show itself was that it's, um, like I was saying earlier, like everything's not going to be funny to everybody. Yeah, it's really not. They wanted a, they intentionally wanted a variety of comedians to. No. Nah garner attention from everybody and, and and seth makes jokes about it the entire show about um, playing in colleges and uh, bars all across america it's kind of the running gag well, he's like he, he's well he, they wanted to hit every single algorithm on netflix yeah that was the that was the joke for that um speaking of oh, yes, the fucking it. jeff goldblum bit mm-hmm. with him being the algorithm actually like, legitimately found fun oh, yeah. um but primarily for one for one reason. Yeah, yeah. That real Jeff Goldblum was in the chat, <laughs> or not chat, but the, uh, in the audience. audience. Yeah, yes. When he cuts, when he cuts to him. That <laughs> fu- oh my god, it was so funny. Um, I yeah, tell guys, you what they they needed to do though. What's it? Is not hire that homeless looking piece of garbage Post Malone to sing that god awful Return of the Mac song. <laughs> Let's be honest, <laughs> the song isn't bad. It's there's the song wasn't bad 23 years no. ago when it first debuted in 1995. The song to me and you has been drilled into our fucking brains so much over the past two and a years, two and a half do you years. Know, and do you know why they specifically got that song? Like, is that a I, I, don't, I, I don't understand yeah. don't <laughs> why, know they that why they got it, but I mean, so, I've never heard of Post Malone. But dude needs a shower, yeah, <laughs> and some clean clothes, um, and a career. So, so John, we take him out in post production. It's gonna sound it's Ugh. gonna sound weird to our audience and to John as to why Josh and I specifically had, don't care for that song anymore, and that is because when I was streaming for a group called Half Empty Energy Tank on Twitch, um, there was uh, a few nights where we do music request night. And there was a particular viewer who would come in, and every single time he would join the chat, he would play that song. Or he would request that song. Not, not even say hi, just, just boom, come in with that song request, song. and then say hi to make sure that his song's getting in the is, list. Is, his song, is he and named s- Mac or something? Is that why? No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's just his favorite song of all time. Yeah, and it's and we get that and we understand it, but we don't need to hear it eight times a fucking week. Yeah. So, so when we like, but he is a nice guy. He really is a nice guy. That's, I like that's the guy. That's arguable. We we. <laughs> well, in the I times that I've, but that's besides the point. Um. Anyway, anyway, so I find obnoxious people nice. <laughs> I will say this objectively, 
their cover of that song not bad. I didn't care no, for it. Yeah, I didn't care bad. for it because yeah. I'm tired of the fucking song, but um so I don't know why I cuss fucking that made or curb fucking it. Anyway, <laughs> my brain stopped. We should we should rate this uh, or give the give our grades to the show guys. Um and since John is our guest, I'll let him go first. John, what 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 are your final thoughts and what is what grade are you giving it? Grade first, by the way. I really like the series. It's uh, I haven't really seen a charity uh, charity type of thing like this, especially like they did the hard R comedy. Uh, I like it overall. Uh, I give it a B. <laughs> yeah. A B? Okay. I, th- I thought you were going to say give it an A, and then you were like, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Keep you guys on your toe, toes. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um. Uh, any other thoughts about it? Or is that uh, it? that's it. Uh, what you guys said, I uh, I agree mostly. Most uh, thing. Uh, my yeah. My my one of my favorite one is that Justin Rowland thing and uh, Michael Shea and uh, I forgot who are the other people off the top of my head. But oh, the John Mulaney one. Yeah. But and everything else, I overall like. Okay. Uh, Josh, thoughts grade. I'll give it a B minus. Uh, like I said, uh, overall, I think it was structured poorly, uh, but really high points for, uh, the actual talking about the Mm -hmm. work that they do near the end of the special, what their money that, how the money that they raise is used by giving care, uh, in home care for a year to families in need, um, with, uh, you know, live in. Alzheimer sufferers. Uh, the rainbow connection with Kermit the Frog right after that brought a tear to my eye. I mean, oh, that was touching stuff. That outweighs those good, high, strong points outweigh the points that I thought were weak. So that's why I'm giving it a B minus. It is a wonderful cause. Uh, you uh, and anybody that wants to donate, you know, they can do so at h- hilarityforcharity.org. I was so. just looking up the website because I could not remember the website he gave. I felt like it was something else. I thought it was like it was like charity HFC or something like that. But well, I think that is like their hashtag mm-hmm. HFC or something like that. But gotcha. you know, the actual website itself is hilarityforcharity.org. dot org. Okay. Um. Well, I mostly agree with you guys. I think uh, I am going to give it a, a B B plus. Um. For a couple reasons. Uh, number one being that I, I think I laughed at it more than you did, Josh. I really did. Um, oh, obviously. <laughs> uh, I mean, primarily, like, I legitimately was, like, in laughter tears from Sarah Silverman's bit. So that whole thing really got me. Um, and then uh, just everybody else being genuinely really funny. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was either A, chuckle-worthy, or B, didn't laugh at all. Especially, like, the, the live-action bits were just not funny. Um, no. They had good gags, but that was about as far mm-hmm. as that went. Um, pretty much any time Seth Rogen was trying to do something funny, I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't know that this is working for you, dude. Uh, but because, because yeah. of the fact that it's going to something that I think is an important important charity to definitely point a, a, a light at um, and the fact that like they went for like John, like you said John they went for that that rated R mm. comedy um, and didn't pull nope. back I think is perfect uh, so uh, so for that yeah B minus all right um, I thought you said B plus I did say B plus I, I don't know why <laughs> in that few minutes I did that. that you B plus. you downed it <laughs> <laughs> I <coughs> coaxed myself into a B plus. Yeah, right, so, so, B plus. So, uh, so we've got Greg gives it a B plus, John a B, me a B minus. So it's you know, it's worth checking out. It's worth an hour and ten mm-hmm. minutes of your time. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna move on uh, to our next show. But first, uh, briefly, I want to uh, kind of mention that we still have a Patreon going. Um, if you guys are interested in checking out the Patreon, we do have different tiers and rewards for people who donate more. Um, again, it, it's, it's not something that's recommended or not. I'm sorry. Not, that's not the right word. Mandatory. Um, we want you guys to enjoy the show, whether or not you feel like throwing a couple bucks our way, but 
if it's something that interests you. Uh, Josh, what are some of the rewards that we have? Uh, well, you know, an exclusive show for Patreon uh, subscribers. Uh, plus the opportunity for you as a patron to choose what we discuss during that show. Uh, exclusive potential video content. That all depends on things in the future. Uh, but some of the things we're talking about doing are live Hangouts, you know, like on Discord or uh, Google Hangouts, you know, unbroadcasted. Just be hanging out, shooting the shit with us. Uh, one of the things we're wanting to do is like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type thing where we do, oh, wow. where we watch, you know, like a Netflix original or something that's really cheesy from, you know, but exclusive and just do like a MST3 case spoof. Audio wise, of course, uh, but you know, uh, also same day access. The show's recorded uh, instead of waiting a few days uh, before it's uploaded. Just go to patreoncom slash podcast and you can see all about that. Awesome, awesome. I yeah, it's um one of the things that I that I had an idea, and I don't know if it's in there. But uh, doing a, um, a like an exclusive show that Josh and I basically do like a riff track sort of thing and like a bad movie. <laughs> that, that's what I just said, Mystery Science Theater. Oh, out. I was looking at my audio file wave and I was interested in that and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I don't know. You're just like my wife, man. Nobody fucking listens to me. Actually, I was thinking about my. Listen, I was actually thinking about my thoughts. It's just. I was thinking about my thoughts on... It's, it's on where I'm are we sick. just going to keep over-talking? It's where I'm sick. <laughs> it's where I'm sick and... Yes, we are. It's where I'm sick and heavily. I want to be heard, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Josh. You're going to kiss ass, John. You're already on the show. Um, I can uh, be on the show permanently, though. Not just <laughs> all right, I want to talk about Lost in Space, <laughs> goddammit. Uh, let's talk about Lost yeah, in Space. Let's do that. Um, let's do that. So this show... Like just came out on Netflix, like I think last week or so, uh, April thirteenth. April thirteenth. April thirteenth. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. it's it's actually not that long. I think it's only ten episodes, if I if I remember correctly. Ten episodes. Ten episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, right, uh, right about an hour in length. So you're looking just at about ten hours worth of content. Yeah. Um, it is a full reboot. So if you remember the old show or the awful movie with Matt LeBlanc. Um, purposely avoided that one, thanks. <laughs> but as a kid, uh, growing up on TBS, Lost in Space was one of my favorite things to watch as a kid. I loved that show. The original one? The original, okay. yes. Um, I never really watched the original. The only Lost Same in Space here. I ever had access to was that terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, same so, here. That terrible movie is also on Netflix, but I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't watch it. Watch this instead. 100%. 100%. Like, I couldn't even kind of argue that. Um, uh, so, Josh, go ahead and, and, and give the audience a synopsis about what this show is. Well, basically, <clears throat> and please forgive me. Forgive me for my voice is a little weak where I do have this weird uh southern appalachian uh hiv virus um whatever it is uh when a celestial object dubbed the christmas star by the media crashes into earth and threatens humanity's survival in the year 2046 mankind launches the resolute an interstellar spacecraft carrying selected families to colonize a new world the robinson family is selected for the 24th mission of the resolute but before they reach their destination in the Alpha Centauri uh, system, an alien robot breaches the Resolute's hull. Some of the families are forced to evacuate the mothership in their short-range Jupiter spacecrafts, and the Robinsons and other colonists crash land on a habitable nearby planet where they battle the strange new environment and their own personal demons as they attempt to find <laughs> a way back to the Resolute and on to Alpha Centauri. Uh... Yeah, that uh, sounded like you read it directly from a thing. Um. <laughs> I did, I did, because it makes it easier. Oh, I agree. I you know, some, I, there are some times where you'll just you'll just talk like you remember the show, and there are times where you read it, and it's 
There's a clear difference. Um, not that it's bad. Just I noticed, Whoa. and I just wanted to call you out on it because I'm an asshole. Um, uh, that's okay. Here I am dying from HIV, and you're doing this to me. I see how it is. Uh, <laughs> if I survive to the end of this show, it'll be a miracle. I mean, my voice is failing. You'll be all right. I, I, I can't contract what you have over the internet, so we're okay. Um, you don't know how it works, man. <laughs> This is the Southern Appalachian strain. You don't know how this works. If it gets through my phone, I'm going to be mad. Mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, lost in space. <laughs> show got weird. Uh, yes. I, I really, I really. <laughs> show got weird from the get go. I really enjoyed this show. I really, really, really dug it. I, I'm a sucker for uh, good science fiction, and this show is good science fiction because mm-hmm. of two reasons. And I've talked about this in the past when it comes to any genre. If you don't have compelling characters, your story sucks. No matter what cool little thing exactly. you have. If your characters suck, your story sucks. And this show has fantastic characters. It absolutely does. Um, absolutely. I was When I was watching the first episode, I was really interested in how they were going to introduce the robot. Because, again, I didn't know... I knew, you know, everyone knows Danger World Robot's in danger. Everyone knows that. Like, mm-hmm. that's part of all cultural osmosis if you will and uh or zeitgeist if that's the term you want to use um but i never knew how the robot came about in the original show and i just assumed that it was a robot that they had and it was just it was in the original show it was pretty much just designed on earth and sent with them to be their utility robot that's what i assumed that's honestly what i assumed but i again was unsure. The fact that they changed that for this show, I think, was a really smart idea. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I, uh, I really liked how the robot was clearly a, um, a dude in a suit for most of it. Yep. But damn, that was a good-looking suit. Not only that, <coughs> The Josh, whole time I was seeing... Sorry, go ahead, John. The... So... Every time I saw that robot in a suit, all I can think of like, oh, they can do a really good Halo, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, movie with the Covenant. I was like, if this, they they can make this look so real to the point where I believe that it's a ro- real robot. They can do a Halo movie, so it looked really nice. The the robot. Yeah, I completely agree. I think uh, the the other aspect to the robot that I thought was really fascinating was that the outfit, the suit that was that that the guy was clearly wearing, um, was awesome looking, but. Mm-hmm. Yes. Usually, when that happens, when you have the same character who's who both has a suit and there's a, a CGI version of it, in a in a show that is, I want to say like on Netflix or some of that effect, you can clearly see the difference between CGI and this. They did a really good job at making those mesh and not look weird. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I don't know if because if it's face too is like you can tell the face is. I don't. For me, it probably was CGI. I'll be surprised if it was actual television <laughs> that was connected on his head, or oh, that, I'm sure uh, it was just. I'm sure it was just like a little thing. green, a green circle on his face. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it was like it really like when the the scene that I'm talking about is when him and uh, the robot are stuck in a tree, and uh, he mm-hmm. yeah, like the very first episode, and he cuts the robot down. The robot in that scene entirely is CG. Like, 100%. Yep, yep. But, um, later when, like, the robot comes up and does some other stuff that, you know, helps the Robinsons, it didn't look not CG. Like, it looked the same. It didn't look mm-hmm. off. It yep. didn't look weird. Like the, like, the CG animation wasn't suddenly, like, weirdly more animated than the live-action stuff. So, um... Or the suited stuff, I should say. So yeah, I'm just I'm just con- con- like commending them on their work with the robot. I'm, mm. I'm talking. Yeah, it myself was here. it was really solid. Uh, uh, the only thing, the only thing, and you don't really see it, but in a couple of shots that didn't look good were the were the feet in a few scenes of the suit of the robot, but. I, yeah, I didn't notice that. Very, very minimal. Yeah, I don't remember what you're talking about exactly, but I'm sure it was there. 
Um, to be fair... Well, like I said, it was very minimal. <laughs> to be fair, I was uh, playing video games at the same time watching it, so it was like... I wasn't paying like... You have a bad habit of attention. doing that. You have a bad habit. I was watching the show well enough. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't playing a game that was like action packed where I couldn't concentrate on the show at the same time. Like it was mm-hmm. it's, If you're gonna be honest, I was playing PUBG while <laughs> watching this game. That I couldn't do. That that I could not do. It was uh, But I was playing PUBG mobile, so I can see it and do it, and uh, I can tell what's happening. Not most of the oh, time, man. but like probably one or two episodes I was doing that. <laughs> man. No, we turned down the lights, we spread out the blankets, sprawled out on the floor, propped up some pillows, popped popcorn. We enjoyed it. We made a oh, hell of no, an event out of this <laughs> series. <laughs> we, we, we went all out, man. We had a blast. Uh, Misty and I, we watched it start to finish, and we watched it over the course of two or three days, about three days, I think. Okay. I think, um, yeah, for me it was also three days. Uh, I was trying to do three days, then everything I'm just got saying, too what, much. What I'm getting at is it. like the, the, the minor stuff. The stuff that you're talking about, Josh, mm. where like a boot didn't look right or something like that. I probably would. Oh, like I said, it was very minimal. Yeah, like. Very, and mostly not noticeable. That suit looked amazing. Well, like there, I there love was how scene. the fact, too, that on the suit, you can tell, you know, it's the suit, but yeah, there is a hole through the center of the suit in shots. You know, to show that he is not solid. Yeah, like, and I like thought, the guy. That's a nice touch. The guy underneath is wearing like a green screen bodysuit, is what I. What yeah, like. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but you know. Well, there, there are it scenes. Doesn't... There, there are definitely scenes in the show where you can tell it's a robot, and then, like the cave scene, for example, like he puts his hand in the mud and then puts his hand next to the kids' hands. And as he does that, mm-hmm. yeah. um, you can see that, like, basically only his fingertips are touching the wall. But he pulls his hand away yeah. and the whole yeah. handprint's there. And you're just kind of like, oh, that looked weird. But you kind of forgive it because you're like, <laughs> it's a suit. And that's really fun. It's fun to see a suit in a show, even if it's, like, a little wonky. But that's what also impressed I me. I love... Uh, yeah, I mean, I love the use of practical effects and the way they did it. It was, as you were saying, very impressive the way they made this suit. Yeah. I wonder if they did that to honor the original one. Probably. You know how the original one is, yeah, a role well, I like mean, a person. Also, suit. I think it goes in line with, like, you know, a lot of a lot of these classic shows that are coming out. Um, like, they're making an upcoming Predator movie, and the Predator outfit's going to be a guy in a suit. Um Oh wow! I didn't even know yeah. that. Like <laughs> they're making a new one. People, people have realized that you can put as much CGI you want, as you want in a film, and if it doesn't feel mm-hmm. right, people are going to disconnect from your movie. And nine mm-hmm. times out of ten, like technology today is so good that you can do both at the same time and make it look seamless. And that, that's yeah, and, exactly. and this show does that really, really well on not that big of a budget. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was like another sci or CGI character in this show, the that monster thing. The uh, I don't the, know what the, the what did they call it. That attacked the thing or the beast. So yeah. yeah, in one of those episodes, it had it, and it looked nice to me. Like every time I saw it, it always reminded me of like the Jurassic Park style of monster, where they it's still minimum the way it looks. So like there was a one episode that felt like a straight from like uh, Jurassic Park Lost World where the monster was in the camp yeah, yeah, and like trying that. to search for it. And I was like, man, this gave me so dif- so much like different feelings that I really liked the way they shot that scene with the, uh, I forget her name. Is it Penny? Yeah, I, it was, I believe Penny. Penny. The, the, yeah. I was like, man, this looks really nice. Just that one little scene. They uh, like, it's a like homage to that style of uh, filming. One thing that I, I really appreciate that they did um in in that same in that same vein is um even though it's sci-fi they made things feel like a different style of of film so like in that scene like that that felt very horror filmish um Mm -hmm. uh there's a action sequences tense moments um what feel like espionage moments like there's it really runs the gamut of of the kind of show. I mean, there's a there's a whole uh, Fast and the Furious moment in the in the show. 
Oh yes, the, that I enjoyed that too. Especially hit the person going onto the tanker. I was like, man, they're actually doing this scene in this sci-fi movie that I would never think that will show up in a Lost in Space show like the those type of. But scenes. they did it so well that nothing felt out of place. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. This show did so many things so incredibly well. I loved every second of it. And I, I love the actual, you know, the, the characterizations. Mm-hmm. Yep. These characters I, were believable. And what's one of the things that we've said many times, and you mentioned it at the start of this conversation, if you have great characters and a great story, you know, that's the most important thing for any media. These characters, you you really... Like, there is a scene that happens at the end of episode eight where you're just like, oh, my God, that just happened. You think somebody is dead. Oh, and it was just like huge moment. Yeah, we're going to we're going to hold off on. We're actually going to hold a spoiler back, guys. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And. Bang. That was a gut. That was a gut punch, and it's just like I didn't see that coming. And so, wasn't it the end? Oh, wasn't it uh, the end it's of- just a very emotionally impactful because of the mm-hmm. character, the arc that this character had just gone through. I'll, I'll, I'll say this: Josh. this character has been struggling through the, for every episode. I'll, I'll say this: the show felt like it was definitely going in that direction of that it was going to intentionally kill off a main character. I was like, "This is gonna go. This yes, is gonna yes. go. Games, Game of Thrones, Battlestar Galactica route, and it's gonna kill off a character." Um, mm-hmm. And there were a lot of moments where I was like, "They're gonna die now. They're gonna die now." And I was like, "They never did." Mm-hmm. And but when the when the moments got really really tough, and I was like, "Wow, nobody's dead. That's incredible." I my guard was completely let down when that scene happened. Mm-hmm. Same here. Oh yeah. And I was thinking like, "Oh, th- so this is the." Not the reason, but is there a way of shocking people who are used to the original one that, oh, we're going to change it up a little bit and these certain characters are not here anymore. And I was really kind of like um, surprised about that. And in the original one, I'm just wondering, so the Josh, uh, are the characters portrayed the same way? Like no, the not way- at all. Okay. Not at all, and that's another breath of fresh air. Even the personality-wise, like even he's always completely felt, uh, different. Completely okay. different. So, like, I was judging Don West from the movie Don West from uh, what's his name, Matt Be- LeBlanc, oh, Matt or LeBlanc, I don't yeah, know his yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. So he, I was, I was judging him from that character, and I was like, oh, is that the same style of character in the original one, that Don West character? Because I, you know, two of those people portrayed them as that type of like. Uh, I don't know, like the Han Solo type. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe that, but yeah. <laughs> the one that knows it all, but really good. Uh, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> well, never watching the two th- the movie that came out, what, 99, 2000, whatever it was with Matt LeBlanc. I never watched that one. I, mm-hmm. I was like, nope, I'm not watching that because it looks terrible. Um, Don West in the original series was the pilot of the ship. Uh mm-hmm. And, you know, had a really good rapport with uh, John Robinson. Uh, Okay. You know, they were good friends and everything. But he wasn't a smuggler or... Yes, smuggler, yes. That's the word. You know, everything is... This is the mid-60s when the original came out. So, John Robinson, he was the... He was the... He was the head of the household. He was in charge. Mm -hmm. His wife, Maureen... Was is only ever mentioned once in all three seasons of the show. She was a biochemist. What? Really? <laughs> she was a biochemist in the show, but it was only ever mentioned in one episode in season two. The rest of the time, she's cooking the meals and tending the garden huh. and doing those 50s housewife things. So for Molly Parker to get to be this brilliant aerospace engineer and is just a badass problem solver and kind of a take no shit and kind of cunty at first um, character who, you know, she's just a really strong character in her own right. I loved how they portrayed her. Yep. Same. I absolutely loved John, uh, you know, her husband. I love the fact that he was, you know, special ops, Navy SEALs, 
you know, classified, you know, I, I love their strained relationship and how it's eventually repaired. And mm-hmm. when it is repaired, that moment is super heavy. Yep. Uh, and then you have that incredibly great use of comedy, uh, the, you know, to bring levity to that incredibly tense situation. Uh, I thought that was really well done in episode seven when they were stuck in the tar pit and then how they mm-hmm. escaped. That was great. That whole thing. Um, I completely agree. I think that all five actors of the Robinsons were fantastic. I mean, usually when you get a kid. Even the young kid. Yeah, say, that kid that played Will, Maxwell Jenkins, was phenomenal. Yeah, when you when you get a uh, a kid in, in a show like that, you you take a huge risk of like the kid just having moments where you're just like, ooh, oh man, that's kind of off-footing. But he like nailed it the whole show. Like I don't know who yeah, I don't know who directed each episode, great. but they did a fantastic job with him. Uh, but I also want to give a real big fucking favorite character shout out to um, Parker Posey's character. Oh, I love Parker Posey. Oh yes, she was a her doctor. So Smith. before. Before this, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't watch any really trailers for it. I didn't know they changed the character to a woman, uh, Parker Posey. So during the first episode, when that scene, or is this the first episode, I yeah. believe, they showed yeah, yeah. her? I was like, yeah. How, who is this character? And then when it revealed what she did, I was like, oh, that's Dr. Smith. Now I was like, I was really surprised about that too. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then we get the the flashbacks of her character and how she's kind of... Very manipulative of every situation she's well, if in, uh, get into. I was reading a little bit about the show and talking to my dad who watched the show because he's, you know, old. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like, he was honestly, like, 10 when the show was new. I'm not joking. Um, yeah. But uh, he, um, I was asking him about Dr. Smith in the show, and he was like, Dr. Smith was there. He was, he was there, you know, he was part of their ship. He was a member of their crew. But he was very manipulative of Will, trying to get Will to make the robot do certain things, or he would sabotage yep. missions and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh, mm-hmm. that's fascinating. Yeah, because originally uh, there were nations competing to get to a new planet. And he was uh. actually a spy from a rival nation who was supposed uh. to sabotage. Uh. But he, uh, he reprogrammed the robot to sabotage the ship, and that's when they crash landed, and then he was stuck with them. So, it so it's kind of like it was his fault. <laughs> what? But they did a time travel episode, actually, where he had a chance to uh, fix it all. But in the end, if he had fixed it all, huh. they would have died. So, so that's the movie, you just he, said. He, that's he, basically he, the movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, they, they do time travel in the movie where they try oh. to fix the situation. And Dr. Smith it was trying to have Will fix everything. Like, they oh, never crashed okay. yet. Well, here's the thing. The actor that played Will in the original series played the actual Dr. Zachary Smith in this that she steals his identity from. That was oh, that was oh, Bill that cool. was Bill Mooney that's that played really Will homage, Robinson. Yeah. So that's a perfect bridge right there, I think. That's huh. that's fantastic. All right, well, uh let's move on to our grades. Uh, uh Josh, why don't you go first on this one? A freaking plus, man. I loved every stinking second of this show. This is what, when you do a reboot, this is how you do a reboot. You give me characters that I care about, characters that I want to see uh, great things happen for and to, and characters that I want to see terrible things happen for and to. Uh, You give me compelling storylines and... Man, this show had it from top to bottom, beginning to end, A-plus for me. I, this is one of, and I say this, it seems like I say this a lot, but I've been discovering a lot of new shows. This is a pretty great show. This is one of the top two shows I've watched all year. This and Altered Carbon, I think, are the best two things I've watched all year. Um, I, maybe for me, because I really liked Lemony Snicket as well, like really liked it. Uh, but, yeah. but, um, I, I will go next just to kind of throw a loop and everything. It gets an A. It's got a solid A for me. It doesn't get an A plus because I feel like there are aspects of the show that really drove me nuts. 
Um, I felt like having um, like here here are some downsides that I think about the show. Having uh, too many uh, what do you call them Deus Ex Machinas happen throughout the whole show was like, uh huh, yep. <laughs> there was like five of them, and I was just yeah. like, uh. And I'm not a big fan of those because I kind of feel like it's just like a quick way to get out of the problem. <laughs> But yep. but there there's ten episodes, and if they only used five, that means they were sparing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is like <laughs> each episode had like <laughs> each episode had like four to five fucking problems, and a Deus Ex Machina would happen like every other episode one time. So it's not like it's the worst thing on the planet. I'm just letting you know it happens a couple times, and I didn't like it, which is why it gets down to an A. And for Christ's sake, if it gets an A, that means it's a good goddamn show. A great goddamn show. Well, yeah. Um, we, we, <laughs> I mean, we, like, we, here's the thing. We discussed so much good about the show, I had to throw something bad in there. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but the, that's, that's the great thing about it. There really isn't a lot of bad to throw in there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> John, what are your thoughts in grade... So, uh, I really, my favorite genre is sci-fi. Uh, this really hits a lot of my things that I like about sci-fi, but they, like you said, there is a lot of cliche scenes in here that I seen in other things, but they do it so well that I'm forgiving about it. So, uh, I, I look past by it, but there are certain things that they, like you said, the Deus Mox Akia. I, I, I don't Ex know Machina. if I'm saying that word right. Well, sometimes it's yeah. pronounced, sometimes uh, it's pronounced there, Deus there's Ex Machina. A... Sometimes it's pronounced Deus Ex Machina. And I'm just like... Machina. That's the one I always say. Machia. Machina. Yeah. Uh, but there are several of those in this series that I felt like it was a cop-out sometimes when they could have went farther with the story. But I'm happy what they got. I was surprised. So I was watching this on the... Uh, I have Netflix and... I have a kid's account, and I watched this on my regular account, and I was really surprised this showed up in the kid's account of uh, Netflix, and didn't notice that the show was rated PG. And I was like, oh, really surprised that, especially the tense moments and the the themes that the show is going for, that, that it's under the kid's slot. And I was kind of happy because my son was starting to watch it too, uh, without me. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I really liked the show and everything, all the characters and how they portray them, and I give it a solid A. All right. Awesome. Um, it, yeah, it really is a family-friendly show. That is something that we want to do is sit down and watch this with Madison. Um, mm. Time permitting, hopefully she'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Um, next podcast, next episode, we're going to be reviewing... <sighs> Anthony, um, a show that he suggested called, um, I'm going to pronounce as best I can, Agritsuko, which is apparently there's a... What? It, it, okay, so hear me out. This was also suggested that I watch it by another friend, but he didn't suggest that, that I watch it for the podcast. He's just like, you should see it, it's funny. The idea is that, that one of Sanrio's characters, which is a fox, and his name is like Akisuko? It's a red panda. Red Panda, thank you. A Red you. Panda, Panda, Panda named Retsuko. Retsuko. Yeah, Retsuko is her name. And Agrisuko, Agri, Agretsuko is basically taking that character and making a parody show out of it. And Agretsuko, or Regetsuko, because that's technically her name in the show still, is, is a... her. She lives an everyday life, 9 to 5 job, kind of hates a lot of the stuff in her life. But when she lets loose, she does heavy metal at, at like a karaoke bar. And the reason that Josh and I agreed to it was a, we can talk, we can give you know Anthony more shit if we don't like the show, much like, um, <laughs> much like uh, uh, Devil, Devil Man, 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 Man baby. or something. Uh, but also, um, it's short. It's really short. It's like 12, 12 minutes an episode or something like that. Yeah. So what? Uh, uh, yeah, it's like ten provider? episodes, Netflix. twelve to fifteen minutes Netflix. long. Yeah. Um. But the other show that we're going to watch, Josh and I are really excited about, uh, it's on YouTube Red oh, exclusively, yeah. and it's called Cobra Kai. Yep. Um, oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, I'm excited about Cobra Kai. Yeah, it's, it's going to be. Finally, Johnny Lawrence will be recognized as the tragic hero that he always was, and Daniel LaRusso will be shown as the shitty villain he was. 
I mean, he broke the rules. He broke the rules in the tournament. Um, he was an asshole. <laughs> he was a pompous little shit asshole. Johnny was just trying to mind his own business. All right. I mean, he was a flawed hero. Maybe I need to watch Karate Kid before watching this. Because I you haven't do. seen Karate Kid in a long time. And part one and part two. Well, it's on. <laughs> all three of them are on Hulu. I think Cobra Kai only so. feeds off of Karate Kid 1. Okay. I, I watched like part three and it gets super weird. Well, yeah, yeah. The further you go down the Karate Kid, like, like rabbit hole, it gets stranger and stranger. This, yeah, it's like assassins or it, something. It really I was like, does. what's happening? It <laughs> really does get weird. Um, you really only need to watch the first two. But yeah, hopefully next episode, guys, we'll have two two comedies that we enjoyed. But uh, we'll see. We shall see because I honestly don't know about either one of these shows how we're gonna feel. Um, but guys, that's going to do it for us. John, real quick, uh, go ahead and plug your podcast. So my brother and I uh, is doing, or uh, has done this podcast for almost 10 years, but it's on and off and on and on again. And, uh, you were on it, uh, great yep. deeds. Uh, uh, we would want you back as a guest too, uh, in the future, uh, m- but it's called maybe the if you freaking contact me. Off- <laughs> oh Yes. <laughs> Uh, are you? What are you doing next week for uh, Affinity Wars? Nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll 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 uh, uh, DM you okay. uh, later. Uh, be, cool. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we're discussing this. Oh, he's gonna slot up his DMs. This is getting sexy <laughs> with a whole bunch of Affinity Stones. Uh, uh, <laughs> Those are uh, called so anal stones. Check- and oh. you don't pull them. You don't. Here, guys, pro beats. tip about anal beads: don't pull them out like you're trying to start a lawnmower. It doesn't work. <laughs> well, that was that too much uh, for you, Josh. I, now I have was to plug my enough? <laughs> Was that joke not? Good? Oh no, no! I was just gonna say I was letting him finish his thought, and I was gonna say Greg knows from experience, but <laughs> I know a few things too. But I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Josh, no, no. <laughs> Yes, anyway, uh, so you, you check that out at thefreakingawesome.com. All the episodes are up, up to a certain point. Uh, I I have the other older ones, but I have to figure out how to archive those. But there's like 200-something episodes, so I have to figure out how to basically f- uh, which episodes which because there's no real wording to them. They're just episode numbers. I have to listen to all of them. But yeah, you guys can check that out at uh, thefreakingawesome.com. Awesome. Nice. Um. Well, we're going to plug all of our stuff. Um, We have a lot of places you can check out, and all of them are linked on allcutapodcast.com. Yep. We, uh, why am I drawing a blank on, like, a lot of, Josh, help me out here, I'm I'm stupid suddenly. Well, suddenly he says. I'm going to fuck it, I'm going to cancel this podcast, I'm going to cancel it. No, you're not. <laughs> because you're having too much fun. You're having too much fun. All right, well, first of all, go to allcuteuppodcast.com. Bookmark it. Set it, you know, that's you, want, that's you, you want to go there. You just do. Why? Because if you want us in your ears, wherever you go, that's the hub. You go there. Every episode we've done, that's on our episode listings page. Links take you right to our YouTube channel. There's also a nice little sidebar on the left that'll take you to Radio Public where you can listen to us on any Android or iOS device. Uh, Spotify. Uh, Google Play. Stitcher. iTunes. Podbean. You name it, we're on it. And speaking of Radio Public, we're part of the Paid Listens program. And the first week of this month, we mentioned it last episode, we're going to mention it again, we were named to the Radio Public Indie Shows to Watch for in the first week Congratulations. of Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. We, we <laughs> sucked our own penises about that a couple of times last week, but, you know, we'll do it again. Seconds are good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, yeah, guys, uh, you know, we're having, a lot of, we're having a lot of fun doing the podcast. Obviously, as you've heard this episode, I think this is the most fun we've had. And only, this is just episode sixteen. It's only going to get better from here, guys, because yeah. Josh and I, we had a we had a pretty strong rapport when we would do uh, Jackbox nights every every Saturday, and then we started doing yep. this podcast, and we were trying to we were I, I I'll admit this I was trying to feel out exactly how to have a conversation with Josh without you know somebody else being in the chat or me streaming, 
and um, uh, and and wants like I mean you could like if you listen to each every episode you can see us getting more and more comfortable with each other so it's only gonna get better from here. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah. But guys, that's what we hope anyway. That's yeah, uh, yeah. don't keep in mind. Keep in mind though, we have uh, all queued up T-shirts. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, that's right. We're taking pre-orders for those. You can hit us up on our uh, email address, which is uh, all queued up at all queued up podcast at gmail dot com. That email address is at the bottom of the front page of our website. Tell us what size you want. Sizes up to five X. Black T shirt with our logo on it. One hundred percent Gildan cotton. It's lightweight. It's comfortable. Thirty dollars shipped to your door. And I've heard. Uh, let us I've, know what I've you heard, want. I'm not hundred percent sure on this, but. If you also buy a shirt, it's guaranteed to get you the next job you're trying to get, the girlfriend you're trying to get. If you propose to your girl, she's gonna say yes if you're wearing our shirt. It's just, it's just science. Uh, if you're if you're wearing our t-shirt, it's guaranteed at least a hand job from your girlfriend. No. Sorry, my uh, Discord decided to break up there for a second. I didn't hear your joke. Oh. Well. <laughs> What I was saying is that if you're wearing our T-shirt, you're guaranteed at least a hand job from your girlfriend. Yes, yes, agreed. 100%. Yeah, see, see, that is a 100% guaranteed. And we've almost got enough. Uh, you know, we're taking pre-orders to fund it. Of course, our initial order. Uh, we're almost there at that pre-order goal to get uh, 40 shirts. Uh, you know, uh, 40, we're going to get 40 shirts printed off to start with, and. Once we sell through those, we'll use that money to fund new orders for other ideas later on. But yeah, that's where we're going with it. That's where we want to take it. We're wanting to blow up. We're going to expand. You guys are helping us get there. More and more people are hearing us each week around the world, and we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you guys so much for, for coming back week to week, or episode after episode. Even if Josh does have the HIV, um, we appreciate you I guys. do. I'm dying. <laughs> This is the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> Calm down, Red Skellington. Is it Red Skellington? That's not correct. That's a different guy. It's Red Fox, Red man. Red Fox, yeah. No, yeah. I knew it was wrong when I said it. I just said it first. Red 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 Skeleton was, you know, he was a comedian from. Also, back in it's the Red too, but... Skeleton, not Skeleton. <laughs> He's not like Jack's brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Stupid Southern <laughs> I was like, I didn't Europe, understand man. that, and then until it hit me, what character you're. Oh, oh. Shit, that was good. Anyway, guys, we thank you for your. I'm over here dying. <laughs> this ending went all to shit. Uh, our endings are always gonna go to shit. Um, I'm, That's I'm, okay. I'm convinced that once once the episode, like once we're done with the reviews, people shut off the podcast. I'm convinced. <laughs> um. Uh, but guys, if you do stick around for this, uh, thank you so much. It's, it's been, it's, it's super fun to do this show. And, uh, Josh and I get to watch, yeah. good, we get to watch shows that we might not have thought about watching previously. So, uh, that's exactly. something I'm really digging. Um, yes. but yeah, guys, like I said earlier, our next episode is going to be on Agris, uh, our, our, our Agrisuko, Agrisuko and uh cobra kai so definitely watch those and then we'll see you next week or not next week we'll see you next podcast yeah two weeks from uh, this will be uploading on the 27th so the next episode will be uploading on may the 11th yeah which is like very shortly after cobra kai releases so Mm-hmm. about a week yep. so that gives us plenty of time to get it watched Yep. But yeah, John, big thanks uh, for you coming on Thank and you being for on. for having me. Oh, I yeah. It. it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. We definitely uh, would like to do this again sometime. Yes. That'd be cool. Um, <laughs> we well, What I really want to do one day, John, is get your brother on here and then you and him have a conversation and it just sounds like one person's talking to themselves. Oh, yes. Like our podcast. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I've uh, that joke's been made, or maybe it's just one person really <laughs> on the podcast. Like, maybe I am Ben. Um, yeah. you don't know. No, but no, I really appreciate you being here. It was really fun to uh, to have a third a third party kind of throw in their opinion on the stuff we watched, even though it lined up well with ours. Um, yeah, 
Sorry for that. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> Next no, time it's I'll fine. be like, more critical. No, it's good. I mean, we, we let people know that like if they're looking for uh, some stand up that they want to watch, that there's a good there's a good outlet. Mm-hmm. And if they want a really well done sci fi show, there's another one. So, yeah. Like, no, it was perfect. It was great. Um, but uh, but yeah, guys, that's gonna do it for us. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And we will see you next time. Bye. Take care, everybody.